Hi Vana from Unity, John here. Um, this is going to be a little video about some recent vinyl finds. Um, I went shopping recently just in the local charity shops that we have here in the UK, in the, the town that I live closest to, a small town called Barry in the southern part of Wales. Um, listening to do, We Are Spinning This Record which is a really, really cool album. I've had this for a while. This isn't one of my new ones. I'm just playing it. Um, and this is one of the ones that uh, I spent uh, time listening to this this week, if you like, as my news resolution to listen to the record all the way through. Um, I've probably listened to this album three or four times all the way through um, without doing anything else other than just enjoying it. Um, this is um, Bloomfield, Cooper and Stills Super Session. It's essentially a jam, I think. They're just jamming. Um, each of the players on this album were um, in the process of leaving their respective bands. Um, and Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper, they had recently just worked on Bob Dylan's Highway 61 Revisited album and sort of formed a connection, so they were sort of following up with that. But this album, really good, recommend it. Anyway, so, I've got some fun things to show. Um, each of these cost me a pound, um, which isn't very much money at all. And now, it used to be so before I moved to the States that um, to get record shopping in um, charity shops in the UK was really good. Um, you could find all sorts of stuff out there and records in that time were sort of filed at the back in amongst the knitting patterns um, weren't taken very seriously and you could get them for kind of penny you know and when I come back from the States to Europe and went to the UK again all of a sudden records were fashionable and very expensive and you get the feeling these days that when you go into a charity shop to buy records, you get the feeling that there's already been a hundred thousand people doing exactly that same thing before you, so there's not really much left to look through. But um, I had some luck this day. Uh, the first album I'm going to show, I'm dead chuffed to find this. I see, I'm, I'm, I might even do a needle drop of this at the end of this video, just to uh, give you all the chance to hear it. It's really good. I particularly like the cover. So it's an album, it's an um, instrumental um, called The Great Western Salutes, The Sound of Detroit. Really fun record. I can't really explain what that sounds like, but you'll hear later on at the end of this, of this video. Um, the next thing I got <coughs> is a compilation album. Now, I wouldn't normally bother so much with compilation albums, although I do like them from the 60s and 70s. Um, this is called Hitmakers. Um, it's on Marble Arch. You can see that label. Um, it's in mono. The whole album's in mono. But the thing that I was particularly happy about it's the, the artists at the top of the list there, and if you can see that, David Bowie in the lower third, a track called Can't Help Thinking About Me. And um, it would have been one of the very earliest carnations of David Bowie, uh, one of his very first sort of earliest singles. In fact, I suspect at the time when he made that sing single, um, he actually would have been still called Davy Jones. Um, and this was most probably released after he'd sort of found fame. Um, it's also got a track by Donovan on there. Like I said, it's all on mono, so it's quite unusual. Um, okay, the next uh, piece of vinyl isn't so particularly great, but I'm going to show it anyway. It's quite an iconic single, I think. White Lines, Don't Do It. Um, by Grandmaster and uh, Melly Mel not really my thing, but I do remember when this came out, when this hit the streets in the, in the 80s, um, it was really quite unusual and I think a very sort of early example of rap music, 
Um, but it was particularly unusual at the time. You just didn't hear stuff like this. And, uh, I picked it up really because I thought, well, it's iconic. Um, okay, this is perhaps the best thing that I found on this particular trip into town. This is a band called Funky Junction, called Funky Junction Player Tribute to Deep Purple. And I thought to myself, it's some kind of rubbishy sort of tribute band or something like that. And it's sort of, you know, I couldn't work out, well, why would somebody buy Deep Purple music played by somebody else? Um, and not Deep Purple. And I still don't know why. But then I remember, I recognise that name, Funky Junction. I just assume that maybe it's because I've got a record of theirs at home, but they hadn't. But then I remembered, I'd recently read that name in this. This is last month's issue of Classic Rock magazine. And there's a really good extensive piece in here about Thin Lizzy. And I read through it again, and right up here, top of this page, now it tells a story about when um, Thin Lizzy, in its sort of earliest incarnation, uh, Phil Liner, the drummer, and Eric Bell, the guitarist, um, well, they were having a hard time, and um, they needed some money. And they got in a situation where they could go in the studio and record an album of um, Deep Purple songs. Goodness only knows why, but they apparently were paid a thousand pounds for it at the time, which is a lot of money in those days. And that's this album. I found this for a pound at a charity shop, really good condition. Um, I've looked online, and it seems to me that yeah, you can you can pick this up on Discogs for next to nothing. But I suspect it's because most people don't know what it is. Um, so now my biggest dilemma is: should I file it under Thin Lizzy, <laughs> Deep Purple? or Funky Junction. Um, I recommend it, listen to it. I think you can hear this on YouTube. Check it out. Um, and then I got a couple of um, compilation albums by the Hollies. Hollies Great List. Um, this one's seen better days. Um, the Hyle's fine. Firephone. Um, and I also got another compilation by the Hollies as well. This is a double album. This has got 24 tracks on it. It was released in the 70s, I believe. That's why you've got this picture of them with uh, 70s hairstyles there. Um, lovely condition. I'm quite happy about that. Um, purely because thinking about um, Crosby, Sills and Nash recently, um, it was fun to identify that uh, Graham Nash, he was in the Hollies. And that's really his sort of uh, base, if you like, what qualifies him to be in Crosby, Stills and Nash and Young. Um, okay, so that's what I got on that particular trip into town. Um, not bad, didn't cost me very much at all, and I got some fun records. So, uh, happy to share them with you. Um, I'm going to do a needle drop on this uh, on this album now, and hope that you enjoy that. Thanks very much.